I was born a typical middle-class Singaporean in the 1960s. Uh, this meant that I was expected to either be a doctor, or a lawyer, or an engineer, or an accountant. And I remember the first job I wanted to do was to be a defense lawyer. Uh, I watched uh, this uh, drama series called Petrocelli, and it was very exciting uh, investigating cases and then defending your uh, client in a law court. But what happened was um, I played a lot around with uh, electronic circuits and I built my own torches and this finally led me to become, uh, sorry, to pursue a degree in electrical electronic engineering University College London. In London, I was reborn several times. For example, in Singapore, I was taught that if you learn the set answers to a certain set questions, you pass your exam and you can live your life. But in my undergraduate days, I found that if you learn the set answers, you can only pass your exams. If you want a distinction, you have to answer the open-ended questions. What the open-ended questions do is that they test your ability to think for yourself. And I took this uh, one step further. I was encouraged by my undergraduate tutor to do a postgraduate. And so I did a PhD in nonlinear dynamics, and this is where I learned to form my own question and also find my own solutions to these questions. In parallel to my uh, education in engineering, I had another rebirth. I was very shy as a teenager. I was a nerd, and uh, you know, I, the only thing I could do was I, I could just go dance, and I like Michael Jackson a lot. Uh, so when I got to University College London, I joined the UCL Dance Society, and I fell in love with uh, contemporary dance. Uh, I did jazz classes, ballet classes. I watched a lot of performances, uh, dance performances, theater. I went to concerts, and I also went to museums to look at uh, exhibitions. So in parallel to my education in engineering, I was uh, having an education in the arts. And I loved uh, dance so much that I remember when I was writing my thesis for my PhD, there were weeks that I actually did 11 uh, class dance classes in that week. And at the end of my engineering degree, uh, I took a gap year out. Many people took a gap year out to go traveling. I took a gap year out to go into London Contemporary Dance School to do a year, uh, a certificate in dance. And it turned out to be the best year in my life. Um, for me, dance is a combination of physicality, intelligence, and artistry. There is no greater expression of living for me. Um, and so, you know, uh, I had my biggest rebirth in London Contemporary Dance School. After going through primary, secondary, university, and a postgraduate in engineering, I decided I did not want to be an engineer. So I came back to Singapore and was kind of lost. I couldn't do what I wanted to do and train for. But I found out in London Contemporary Dance School, it, there were 13 weeks of uh, classes. I was sick for two to three weeks. So I couldn't do what I loved as well, and I was kind of lost, and my sister was going to try and tell me like, hey, you know, uh, get a grip, do engineering. My father was going like, well, I've made you do a PhD, um, I'll let you explore. So the only thing I knew was that I wanted to do something in the arts. And so I spent a three months with Action Theatre, and then I joined the Esplanade as a programmer. Actually, I joined the Singapore Arts Centre, which was a precursor to the Esplanade. It wasn't an ideal situation, but it was good because I was in a group of people that was building a major art center in Singapore. But the thing is, I couldn't get dance out of my system. So I met Angela Leong, who was the, then the head of the dance department in the LaSalle SIA College of the Arts. And she allowed me to take pictures of her dancers uh, when they were performing. And I showed these to the editor of the arts magazine, the magazine that was being published by the Singapore Arts Center. And he said, hey, you can take pictures of uh, performing arts, and you should take some pictures for the arts magazine. So I had a parallel job, a second job. I was taking pictures of performances. I actually took visual arts as well and portraits uh, for the arts magazine while I was working there. But I found out that I'm not so good as an administrator. I hated dotting I's and crossing T's. I made a lot of mistakes. 
So after two years, I accidentally became a photographer and I was taking pictures of performing arts. I took dance pictures, I took theatre pictures, I took pictures of uh, musicals, and I also uh, formed my own studio um, and I started taking publicity pictures for th dance and this is for theatre. So, um, you could call me like a performing arts photographer. But the thing is, the performing arts really has got no money. Half, I get half the uh, commercial rates that I can get when I shoot for performing arts. So in order to actually do what I love and be close to dancers, I was also a wedding photographer for four or five years. And I was also a corporate photographer for two or three years. And all this led up to 2008. I did a book called Dance Me Through the Dark and this is a, I also did an exhibition and this was a two-year project. I was taking pictures of dancers that I had met at the Singapore Dance Theatre and actually to me, although the photography took two years, I think the whole project was a 10-year project from the start of my career in photography, uh, getting a studio, getting to know dancers and everything. And it, for me this was the expression of the beauty of dance that I really wanted to capture and I was very, very happy. So it was, it was a great year, 2008, I got this exhibition out. The interesting thing is sometimes we are lost because we can't do what we want to do. And there are times we are lost because we have achieved what we want to do. I realized that if I continued taking photographs of dance, I would improve. But I would not improve at the rate that I used to do uh, building up to the exhibition in 2008. And I was kind of lost and I didn't know what to do. I carried on with my work and I did workshops. So I like doing workshops in Tuscany with the Toscana photographic workshops. And I stumbled upon a workshop by Anders Peterson, a Swedish photographer. Anders Peterson became famous with a book called Café Limits. And what Café Limits was, it was Anders Peterson staying in a cafe in Germany for two years. He got to know prostitutes and gangsters. And his work looks documentary, but actually what happened was these pictures were like extended family photographs. And Anders's, Anders' point about photography was it should be about life. The photography is a byproduct. This is a picture of Marina. She's a photographer from another course. She's very pretty and I kind of like fancied her, right? Um, so I invited her to my room and um, we, we kind of like had a connection. It wasn't physical, but um, <laughs> we actually talked. And this picture is technically, technically quite simple to take. It's lighting from a window. But it's because we had a connection and she was actually giving to the camera and that's something that's very important. So what I learned from Anders Peterson is that we have to stop hiding behind the camera and we have to put ourselves into the images. And um, actually it's a bit hard to live the type of life that Anders Peterson lives, especially in Singapore. But I was very determined to find ways to put myself into the images. And what I did when I came back to Singapore was I tried to meld dance photography with this uh, series which I did called Night Song because at night is the time um, we desire someone uh, when we're dating someone for the first time, it's very exciting or when you don't get to date someone, you're very sad and you're lonely and this project kind of worked but you know, it's a, it takes a long time to put new ideas into your work so it, I kind of did this, it was good for me, but it didn't really work that well. In 2010, I decided to have a dream trip, an uh, overland journey from Singapore to London. And along that trip, I went to Tuscany again, and this time I took a workshop with uh, Arno Minkinen, a Finnish photographer. And I was exploring the importance of dance to my life and the freedom that I felt in this type of uh, you know, uh, with dance and this type of photography. And this project actually won me the uh, top project of the week amongst 35 photographers and several workshops. And then I thought, hey, you know, I have found a way to do some personal exploration 
and this is what I want to do with my photography. But unfortunately, on the same journey in 2010, 10 days out of London, I had a phone call from my father. He said, hi, I'm sorry, I've, I caught a, uh, I've got a stroke in London. You've got to come and look after me. So from Helsinki, I took a boat to Stockholm and I flew to London. Um, I looked after my parents for about six weeks in London and winter was coming and I brought my parents back to Singapore. So the last three years has been kind of like traumatic emotionally. Uh, my father's been in and out of hospital several times. My mother needs a lot of support in the running of the house and getting things done. And emotionally, I was drained. Um, so it's very hard to do personal exploration in, in this type of circumstances. But you know, this thing in a house waiting for the next crisis to happen, it's really, really uh, quite a horrible thing and I had to work. So what I did was I started working on work that's a little bit more conceptual, it doesn't take any uh, emotional investment. This uh, series I've done is called Portraits as Archaeology. So I was a corporate portrait photographer and I was interested to take um, more telling images of my subjects. And this is called an environmental portrait. And in most environmental portraits, you put a person in the place uh, that they uh, work in or they live in. So I was interested in putting the place in the person and the picture becomes an archaeological site for the viewer to dig in and understand the person more. So this is Darren Ng, he's a musician. Um, this, is, this is my cleaning lady who's a Closet F4 fan. So, um, and then I also wanted to continue that series which I did in Tuscany. But um, in Singapore, if I took my clothes off and took my pictures of myself in the nude, I'd probably end up in jail very quickly. But what I realized that it's possible to take nudes in a studio but doing it in the normal way was kind of boring. Um, I, I felt that to make it more interesting, I wanted to use old pictures from my family pictures to light me. And I realized that if I could do this, um, I could actually do it on my friends. So this is my friend Manwai, a dancer with pictures of his parents uh, at the wedding. And this is a picture of a visual artist, Kanako, lit by her mother. So these are the conceptual stuff I'm doing, but Dance is never far away. Um, I didn't want to shoot dance the way that I shot in 2008, at least not personally. Uh, but I've been a dancer myself and I talked to a lot of dancers and we always talk about energy. And what's this energy? So the photographs that I see of dance don't capture energy. So I embarked on a series where I use long exposures and LED lights and I'm exploring the energy of dancers. This is my solution to it. So this brings me to the present day, uh, where I am today. You can see that dance is a very important part of my life. And you can see that what I learned in my PhD to form my own questions and form my own answers continues to inform my work. So um, in my life, I wanted to be a lawyer. I've got a degree in electrical electronic engineering. I've got a PhD in nonlinear dynamics. I have got a certificate in dance. I worked as an arts administrator. I took pictures of performing arts, wedding couples, and corporate portraits. And now I'm an art photographer, whatever that means. Um, but I'm also thinking about doing installations, doing video. Okay? Um, I'm actually choreographing a dance right now with a dancer as well. So what I like to, to say in conclusion, is that life is a journey, <laughs> not a destination. And the second thing is I have a quote from my friend, uh, Greg Burns, about art. Art is like uh, walking in the dark wilderness with a torchlight. You can't really tell what's in front of you, just a step or two. You don't know what's way ahead. So you have to just move a step and then other things will unfold. And what I would like to say, like, if you just continue um, to follow your heart and to keep exploring. You, you can have a dance in your life, a non-linear non dynamic dance of life. Thank you very much.